Hi, welcome to Take 5, where we daily consider devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is May 22nd, and the title of today's devotional is The Explanation for Our Difficulties. That they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. John 17, verse 21. Initially, let's place this in chronological order of Christ's life. John 13 began the time of what we call the Last Supper, the final meal Jesus shared with his apostles before the crucifixion. Early in the meal, Judas Iscariot, his betrayer, was dismissed from the assembly. At the end of chapter 14, they leave the room where they had convened. During their journey to where we know as the Garden of Gethsemane, the Lord continued teaching them as recorded in John 15 and 16. Chapter 17 records the final word of Je words of Jesus to the group as a whole, a prayer from which afterwards he, Peter, James, and John would continue into the garden for that final time of prayer preceding Christ's betrayal and arrest. This prayer of Christ in John 17 is divided into three parts. Verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. 6 through 19, he prays for the disciples of that time. 20 through 26, the Lord prays for the saints of the future, you and me. Today's focus verse Verse 21 is that Jesus prayed for you and me for oneness among the believers themselves, but specifically with God. They also may be one in us. Chambers opens with, if you are going through a time of isolation, seemingly all alone, read John 17. It will explain exactly why you are where you are, because Jesus has prayed that you may be one with the Father as he is. There is no relationship that will substitute for knowing God one-on-one. -on -one. There is no joy like it, though most seek for happiness outside of it. You may consider being in a particular church fellowship as being the same as oneness with God, but it's not. Many a person thinks that getting the right spouse will fulfill their deepest need of fellowship, but it won't. I know an individual who was at the beginning of a successful secular music career, but gave it up upon being saved. He began ministering in churches, but the earnest longing of his heart was to be married. Once he was, once he was, his Christian music career was interrupted. He married a Christian, but she, in fact, was more mature in her spiritual walk than he, so it evolved that he didn't serve as the spiritual head of the family. The couple were slow to join a church fellowship, and his time of fellowship with God abruptly slowed. He started his own business so to support his new family and since that time has returned to secular music so to build a name for himself. This all began due to his longing for relationship with a woman in front of his unity with God. He considered the need for a spouse to be the initial step in his growth in Christ so to calm his physical desires. Individuals must always keep in the forefront the primacy of Christ in their life, particularly before their commitment to another. I, too, struggle with this battle of aloneness, and it's by God's planning that he places this study here today to instruct me in accordance to his divine knowledge of what are to be the priorities of my life and what are genuinely my greatest needs. God must be first in one's life before any human relationship, for human companionship isn't good enough to compare with a higher walk with God. This is the literal meaning of needing Jesus to be first in your life. O.C. explains that God reveals in John 17 that his purpose is not just to answer our prayers, but that through prayer we might come to discern his mind. And what is at the forefront of Christ's mind for us? Chambers says, the one prayer which God must answer is the prayer of Jesus that they may be one just as we are one. Are we as close to Jesus Christ as that? Jesus prayed nothing less for us than absolute oneness with himself, just as he was one with the Father. Some of us are far from this oneness, yet God will not leave us alone until we are one with him.
If you haven't yet read today's devotional from Dr. Chambers' book, I encourage you to do so, for it will enhance the time that we spend together. It's available free online. Please below share any comments or questions you may have, and also please share prayer requests as well. And now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to, to live our utmost for His highest. God bless you. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye now.